like usually there's some sort of truth in what I mean, at least maybe not in the 80s when we were still all making money here. But we take that to what's going on right now. Seems like that's what's going on. Now, Jay, um, um, <clears throat> you mentioned Dave McGowan um, earlier, and I've talked about him before. He wrote the book Weird Scenes in Laurel Canyon. And for those of you that have never heard of it or, or heard of him, it's basically a book about the 60s. Laurel Canyon, basically, in, uh, you know, in Hollywood, uh, that whole area, it's like a, uh, a community that lives in the hills, right, you know, in the middle yeah. of Hollywood. And the street, the main street that runs through it is Laurel Canyon. And that's actually the name of the area, too. And the book basically um, talks about how in the 60s, um, a lot of that, the 60s music, a lot of the hippie music that came from Laurel Canyon had uh, connections to a secret military base right there in Laurel Canyon called, called Lookout Mountain Laboratories, which right. was actually the, uh, the most sophisticated movie studio at the time. And right. uh, the official story is that they were making... Uh, they were filming nuclear bombs yeah, blowing did, up, yeah. and they were analyzing right. them. But really, in, in Dave McGowan's talking about, you know, you know, he's he's focusing more on the music, but right. um, the fact that there was all these American intelligence officers in that area living there, they had families, they had kids, and when they, it just so happens to be, uh, coincidentally, that all these bands that came out of nowhere, right. Mamas and the Papas, even you know, the Doors, all these bands, so many, the list goes on and on, that they had people in the bands that were, were directly related to these uh, intelligence officers, like their kids. Yeah. And when you look at these bands, they didn't struggle, they had no demos, they immediately got pushed, and, um, and then you find out that there was, you know, for a big portion of those bands in the 60s that was really one band doing all the music they're called the wrecking crew, wrecking crew and yeah. they were doing all the music like music was so fake in the 60s and i always knew that was like there was a reason i was never really into 60s music i mean i like Jimi hendrix i like uh you know black sabbath and some but most most 60s music i just did not vibe with i started like in 70s music uh, but um so dave mcgowan wrote this book about all these connections and he's basically saying that the hippie movement um musically was uh, uh, quite possibly based on all the connections some kind of cia psyop fbi yeah. psyop to uh, what to discredit the 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 anti-war movement right yeah. yeah, that's one of the, the key purposes, according to Dave. I think he's right about that. I think there was a lot of things going on. I mean, they were experimenting with new types of psychological warfare. They were experimenting with new types of um, ways to live. So a lot of the hippies and the communal living, they were, they were trying to prep people for where they wanted to take us when they bring in the New World Order, when they bring in austerity. Um, and, and you can find high-level white papers talking about using counterculture creating and steering counterculture to engineer future generations to accept things like the great reset accept things like uh you know what what, what the world economic forum says now you'll own nothing you'll have nothing you'll be happy right uh i mean klaus literally just said we will hack your bodies you will own nothing you will be happy i mean this is all the same attitude of like communal hippies and they weren't they didn't come up with these ideas they were being told by people working with uh high level military a lot of some generals were involved in this if you watch that documentary i'd forgotten about this i just did a, a review on my youtube channel of this documentary the other day uh it's called the unabomber the internet and lsd oh shit by a, a german dude that made this documentary in like 2003 or four it's a forgotten documentary but it's really important because he points out that the the hippies in the Silicon were also connected to the Silicon Valley people. And they had the idea for the internet from DARPA, right? Uh, but it wasn't hippies that came up with this. It was like the military industrial complex was talking to a lot of these hippies and, and seeding these ideas amongst these groups and doing experiments. And that's why Tim Leary, there's a clip, you can pull it up on YouTube where he's like, if you wanna thank anybody for the 60s counterculture he says thank the the, the cia because 
they were the ones giving not just the people at like the music festivals and the Laurel, Laurel Canyon scene, but uh, Owsley Stanley was giving at the direction of the CIA, giving the Grateful Dead four million tabs of LSD throughout their uh, concerts. Yeah. Yeah, dude, one hundred percent. Duncan. I mean, I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be preachy. Like, I, I mean, I've done a lot of acid plenty of times, but I'm saying that like the purpose of it being given out was an experiment to see how it changed people, how they went, and and what they had done. And this this sounds sounds kind of crazy, but they studied indigenous tribes and they studied like shamanism, and they wanted to see how they could create a culture where people would submit to the pop culture figure or the social engineers or whatever, like a ritual initiation and the submission to a shaman. So that the, the MK Ultra project is literally kind of birthed out of like shamanism, like Carlos Castaneda stuff. And how can we get people to be total mind control slaves of, of the culture that we create? And so I think, yeah, you're right. A lot of people who were in that scene were legitimate anti-war people but a lot of people weren't and they were just created wholesale uh out of like you said like if you were uh, i'm trying to remember the bands it was like the monkeys the birds beach boys mamas and papas wrecking crew did all the studio music i mean they would they would play sometimes publicly but the studio music was all the wrecking crew right and that's because these these bands had to kind of be propped up and by the way they were promoted by some of the big record labels, they were promoted by Time Magazine, which was the Skull and Bones CIA run magazine by Henry Luce. Yeah. I mean, he was he was featuring the counter. Kronos is Time, Black Cuba Saturn. Yeah. I think they were doing that on purpose, right? And I mean, I heard you, uh, I was listening to one of your podcasts the other day, Eddie, where you were talking about Zappa. I, I, I'd forgotten that Dave talks about Frank Zappa's dad worked at the Edgewood Arsenal, uh, which is a biowarfare lab. And it's the same lab connected to Dow Chemicals that created STP, which is this like horrible drug that a bunch of people took and went crazy on. But it was his dad that was like involved in that. Uh, and he, I think he was part of that great right, culture creation scene too. Yeah, and it's, it's it's so crazy that Jim, you know, the whole Jim Morrison story. Oh yeah, Admiral Morrison, that, yeah. That, Bill Fatonkin, right. That his, Jim Morrison's dad, First of all, Jim Morrison, I mean, I, this I could be totally wrong, but this is what Dave McGowan was saying. Jim Morrison d wasn't like your typical rock star where right. he grew up wanting to be a rock star. He was writing a lot of poetry in school. He, he knew he wanted to sing. He, he, he was just a, um, a regular guy with no rock star aspirations. And all of a sudden, according to Dave McGowan, he's this big rock star. And coincidentally, and you know, coming from LA in the Laurel Canyon, coincidentally, his dad, no one disputes this so far, his dad orchestrated the Gulf of Tonkin, which was yep. the, flag, uh, the false flag that got us into Vietnam. Isn't that a fucking coincidence? If that's yeah. true, Maybe it's not true, but damn, I haven't heard anybody say it's not true. It is true, though. Yeah, it's true, and yeah. If you take a look at what's going on in modern day today, how many times do we find out that somebody famous, their uncle, their father, their mother, their cousin is famous? There's always a there's always a story. It's never just like very rarely, and I know a couple people, but very rarely at the highest levels does it does it just come mostly actors i think stand-up comics i know a couple of people like sebastian maskelko's parents are just immigrants and leslie jones and tiffany haddish you know I, they didn't they, they didn't have any connections but maybe i'm wrong but you know there's i don't hear it on that but most of these people like uh jennifer anson's mother was a famous um casting director and then there's like you go through like celebrities who are military brats. They're everywhere and, and they love to blow them up because those people grew up in military families where like everything's about following orders and doing the best for your government and all that stuff. Right. And it just happens over and over. But I find it very interesting. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts is as the internet becomes more and more powerful and the legacy media starts to die, like, is it going to be easy for them to blow these people up anymore? I don't know, man. Uh, uh, it, it's, you know, the one thing that trips me out is it's not just what you're saying, Sam, totally true. Um, 
all these connections like uh, you know anderson cooper's from like isn't he from like the the Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. yeah i mean uh, I mean, it could be like, hey, you know what? People are just hooking each other up. It's all about who you know. Your parents hook you up. It's no big deal. You want to hook up your kids. I get that too. But then you have like Bill Gates and and his parents. You know what I mean? You look into Bill Gates' parents, like, oh shit! Like, wasn't wasn't Jeff his Bezos. mom? Isn't his mom like? Didn't she have something to do with the founding of Planned Parenthood or something? Yeah, his dad. Yeah. Oh, his dad. And his, his dad, dad was, was a Genesis. His dad right? ran the. Um... Central Bank of Washington. His mother was very high up at IBM, where he basically got his his uh, pro uh, what's it called his um, his system for his computers. I forget what the exact word is, but uh, he got that from her. I mean, like, I look at the the, the Microsoft logo is a swastika i mean it's already fucking there dude it's like his operating system there it is um I, so the weird thing about the laurel canyon scene and, and it's, it's the same with hollywood what what i did in my book with hollywood dave did with in his book with a lot of uh music scene but that overlaps with hollywood too like you have all of these people that are supposed to be counterculture that are against the system against the establishment but almost all of the really important players in that laurel canyon scene come from not just high level military families or government connected families but like intelligence families that's the weird part it's like it's a lot of people who you know have these high level intelligence connections like bruce dern <clears throat> that family uh he had a, it was, I can't remember if it's the father, like the granddad or whoever it was, but somebody was like uh, the Department of State, head of the Department of State in the Dern family. And then they have uh, Skull and Bones in that family too. So Bruce Dern's uncle, that's who it was, Archibald McLeish, McLeish was uh, Skull and Bones, was a uh, high level State Department. Dennis Hopper, everybody knows who Dennis Hopper was, Crazy Frank in Blue Velvet, right? His dad was OSS. Um, stills of Crosby stills and Nash he did black ops stuff in Vietnam for the CIA special forces operations um I mean it goes on and on and on to what to the point where it's like it's almost like all these people who are the who become the the, the figures of the counterculture the weird part about it is that what they're counterculture but they come from not just military or government government connected families but military intelligence families that's the weird part about it. that's the thread that seems to run through this like the Dern family uh Bruce Stern's uncle Archibald McLeish was Skull and Bones Dennis Hopper's dad was in the OSS Stills of Crosby Stills and Nash was uh CIA uh special operations in Vietnam and so it, it gets to the point where uh the Rand Corporation through Alfred Walshutter he was having meetings in um, Laurel Canyon studying this counterculture scene. Now, I mean, the Rand Corporation is the most establishment type of thing you could think of, the, one of the top think tanks in the world. It basically created modern America. It, it was the brains behind the entire Cold War. Why would they be studying the counterculture scene in the in Laurel Canyon if this was an organic, you know, thing that came about on its own? But, I mean, there's just so many connections that at a high level that I think I think Dave's overall thesis is correct. 